The communist shift in Chicago is beginning. And don't be surprised if you start to see it pop up all over the place. This tactic implemented in Chicago. Chicago considers creation of government operated grocery store. The promotion of food equity was an expressed goal in the mayor's press release. Uh, Why is this called? Why am I saying food communism or communist policies? Crime runs rampant. People struggle to survive. Walgreens closes. The mall closes. San Francisco is collapsing. Well, what happens? I don't know. Problem, reaction, solution, right? Problem. Stores are closing due to high crime. Let's pause for a second and just say the crime's caused by the lax Democrat policies, but I digress. Crime runs rampant. Stores close. Here's one store. Beloved Oakland restaurant is forced to shut down with its owner blaming rampant crime. Okay. Now let's go to Chicago. As these narratives persist and these stores begin to close because they can't keep up with the crime, people in these areas start to complain. In San Francisco, they shut down many Walgreens stores. The malls close. The hotels have surrendered their property. And eventually people are going to say, what do we do? Where can I buy food anymore? The government then steps in. And this is what's happening in Chicago. And they say, well, ladies and gentlemen, we know that these private businesses refuse to support you. So we will. Here's the story. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson has revealed that the city will be partnering with the Economic Security Project to explore the creation of a government owned grocery store to assist historically underserved communities. Oh, here it is. All Chicagoans deserve to live near convenient, affordable, healthy grocery options. We know access to grocery stores is already a challenge for many residents, especially in the south and west sides, said Mayor Brandon Johnson. A better, stronger, safer future is one where our youth and our communities have access to the tools and resources they need to thrive. My administration is committing, committed to advancing innovative whole of government approaches to address these inequities. I am proud to work alongside partners to take the step envisioning what a municipality owned grocery store in Chicago could look like. Right. So when they destroy the local business with COVID policy, when then the when crime then runs rampant and you can't support your business anymore, they then say, oh, gee, golly, I guess we're going to have to do it. Everyone's complaining. Here's your solution. Hey, we can't force private businesses to come and open up a grocery store and crime. Oh, these poor people are just hungry. We'll make a grocery owned, gro- uh, a, a government owned grocery store. And I wonder how that'll play out. It's going to be like Aldi, probably a whole bunch of generic brands that will cost the bare minimum and inevitably become deeply corrupted. That's how things go. You think the food's going to be healthy and good? No, it's going to be garbage. It's going to be plastic trash. It's going to be eventually too, too, too expensive. You see, it'll be really interesting what happens when a government run business comes in and undercuts all the other private businesses. You see where this is going? Someone in a neighboring neighboring municipality will be like the government run store is cheaper. So they'll go there. Eventually, while it's not really cheaper, the government just subsidizes it. They'll make this argument. Look, it may cost five dollars for a gallon of milk. These prices go up. But the average person can't afford it. So here's what the government store is going to do. We're going to sell milk for three dollars because you can't afford it. It's reduced option. Now, even though it costs us five, we'll sell it for three, which means the store operates at a loss. But don't worry, the taxpayer will pay the rest. That's already already how it operates. They have reduced fare bus passes. They always have. If you are of a certain income level, you can apply for reduced fare passes and get on the bus and the trains at a lower rate than everybody else. Subsidized, of course, by everyone else paying the bill. What happens then when this store shuts? uh, Look, here. let let me read this. Johnson's Release noted it aims to provide food equity, and it estimates that the U.S. Department of Agriculture found that 63.5% of residents in the West Englewood and 52% of residents in East Garfield Park live more than a half mile from their nearest grocery store, whereas in West Town, it's less than 1% of residents. The initiative, if completed, would mark Chicago becoming the first major U.S. city to launch a government-owned grocery store to deal with food inequity. Let's say they don't do direct subsidy. Let's say they just sell the products at cost. They say, we don't need to make profit. It's taxpayer dollars that fund the operation of the store. So we just need the store to break even. So there's no profit. There's no surplus. The milk, which normally costs five dollars at your local grocery store, now costs three fifty. People are going to be like, I'd rather just drive to the government store because the milk's three fifty. 
The for-profit stores then say, we cannot maintain this, competing with a government who's selling things at cost. And they shut down. Now a new area has no grocery store. And then along comes the mayor to be like, well, gee, let's launch another one. Unlimited investment opportunity for the government because you pay the bill. What happens when you get a monopoly on grocery stores? Yeah, then you get no food. You know what's going to happen? No more fancy meals. No more variety. No more natural peanut butter. Well, the natural peanut butter is too expensive. Why are we going to pay for that? We've got this perfectly good hydrogenated stuff with extra high fructose corn syrup right here. Look, we're trying to reduce the costs. Having some food's better than having no food. The last thing you want is a monopoly. But how is a private business supposed to compete? It cannot. Now, I'm not saying there's a grand conspiracy, but I'll tell you this. The dominoes are falling in this direction. They say, quote, the city of Chicago is reimagining the role the government can play in our lives by exploring a public option for grocery stores via a municipally owned grocery store and market. Said Amaya Pawar, a senior advisor at the Economic Security Project. Not dissimilar from the way a library or the postal, postal service operates. A public option offers economic choices and power to communities. A city owned grocery store in the south or west side of Chicago would be a viable way to restore access to healthy food in areas that have suffered from historic and systemic dis disinvestment. The administration has reportedly kicked off a feasibility study to see how the store can succeed. I'll tell you the story, my friends, of Pruitt Igo. Pruitt Igo was a housing complex for low income individuals that was launched in the St. Louis area. Originally, the problem was homelessness and a lack of affordable housing. Many people who lived in St. Louis ended up leaving the city and forming smaller towns outside of St. Louis. St. Louis is actually a large county of like 90 plus cities. There were quickly uh, housing covenants enacted. And because they couldn't racially discriminate, what they would do is they'd form a community and then say, no new houses. Here's, here's the law. And what that meant, the people who lived there, lived there for a long time, and they weren't going to be selling anything to anybody else. There would be no houses built. And thus, you've kept racial populations out of your community. I don't agree with the general idea, but I suppose people can form whatever pacts they want to form in private. So Pruitt Igo was, the, was partly the cause of this. It was government funded housing that when it started, it was like, OK, you know, the government has come in here and they've they've subsidized this housing. We're going to put low income people in it, predominantly the black population who are lower income. But eventually it fell to mismanagement, became uh, disrepaired, disheveled, dilapidated, all the words you can think of. Crime started to run rampant and nobody wanted to live near it anymore. A government run store is going to be mismanaged, to say the least. They will have no incentive to properly clean the floors or maintain the business. Why? They cannot fail. Now, I know, I know libraries aren't all disgusting. It's not going to be that bad. I'm not saying it's going to be a bunch of zombies walking around with mold everywhere. I'm saying there's no economic incentive to offer premium services or to go above and beyond. There's no complaints. In fact, likely little refunds. If you're lucky, they're going to say, we don't need your money. We don't care about you as the customer because we're indefinitely funded, in which case you will end up with a degradation of goods and services. You need competition, but the government has infinite money because they just take it from you by force. How are you supposed to maintain a level of quality? Don't believe me? I mean, come on. We only have 70 years of the Soviet Union to attest for what I'm saying. 69, I guess. Their grocery store is fine, not filthy, but lacking products. Why would a government run grocery store buy 10 different kinds of peanut butter? They just buy the one peanut butter and they'll slap peanut butter on it. When I was a kid, the grocery store by me had these yellow cans and it was just stamped with the name of what was on it. Beans, black beans, refried beans, mushrooms, no label, no brand, nothing. Now, what they started doing is they've created the store brand. So like Walmart is good value and stuff because they realized, you know, people actually like it. When they're buying a branded product, they can recognize not just generic product on the wall. The problem is when it comes to government subsidy, they got no incentive to do that. I mean, maybe they might for a while, but eventually they're going to say, we got to cut the budget. Who's doing graphic design for our store products? We don't need that. If people want beans, they'll buy beans. Just put a white label, write beans on it. I guess these cans, they also didn't have nutrition information. So I think that was a law that changed. Now they have to have it. But ultimately, private businesses will struggle to compete with the public sector businesses. You know, are there private libraries? Look, libraries still exist. Barnes and Noble's gone. These bookstores are falling apart. Some still exist in some places, but for the most part, they're struggling. 
But libraries will be around for a good long time so long as people keep saying we should have them. I like libraries, but libraries should should serve a community purpose. And I'm also telling people of this, too. Your business, if you're a brick and mortar store, should be a community enterprise. You need to figure out how you bring people in to break bread with each other and become friends with each other. And that's the real incentive. Otherwise, you're going to get replaced by robots. They're going to automate everything away. And then the government's going to end up owning everything. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.